Hi everybody, welcome, it's Martin, and welcome to Martin is Probably Playing Wrong, and tonight I'll probably be playing wrong a game called uh, Haunted Kobayashi Tower. This is a solitaire game uh, designed by Gabe Barrett, and uh, before I forget, this game is going to be headed to Kickstarter uh, October 15, 2019. So, uh, let me give you the game setup. You are uh, this person here, and uh, you came to this high-rise building where your wife works, and you guys have uh, kind of been on the rocks lately, and you came there with a uh, box of chocolates, which you have right over here in your inventory, and uh, some roses, some flowers, and you were going to uh, try to be sweet to her, try to patch things up. Uh, unluckily for you, the building has been taken over by terrorists, like this one right over here. And their leader is named Lars. There's Lars, and he, they has taken your wife hostage. So now you have to quest your way through the entire building, represented by this deck of cards here. Uh, in the final version of the game, it's going to be about 70 cards. And you have to make your way, and you're going to be going through hallways, finding doors, opening doors, finding items. And eventually, you'll want to get to all the way through this location deck, Find Lars, defeat Lars, and rescue your wife to win the game. Now, how are you going to do this? Well, you have a handgun, and you have a limited amount of ammo represented by these dice here. And you have a status board over here, and your health starts at 6, full up, and your time starts at 20. Time is a very, very important resource in this game. Pretty much anything you want to do in terms of firing your weapon or throwing grenades at a terrorist is going to uh, use up some of your precious time. You can also hide, and I'll show you how that works a little later on in the game, but hiding also will deplete your time. And as your health goes down, uh, if you tangle with terrorists and they, and they uh, hurt you, then the number of dice you roll for your skill tests also decreases. So basically, the, as you get hurt, uh, the harder it is to perform skill tests in this game. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much the uh, kind of uh, initial setup of the game. And we're going to complete the setup here, get all the cards uh, squared away, and then we'll get started with our playthrough. And by the way, this is my print and play prototype copy of the game. So everything you see here was made by me uh, from the print and play, early print and play files of the game. So this art is not final. This card back is not final. And you can expect uh, all this stuff to uh, become even more well, uh, well, nicely polished uh, once the Kickstarter launches. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start playing um, Hunted Kobayashi Tower. All right, here we go. So the first things first, on your turn, you basically have two actions. You can draw a card and expose it here face up in the hunted row, or you can hide. Uh, hiding will have the effect of clearing out whatever cards are in the hunted row at the cost of one time. So right now, we have to make our way through the building and we have to, uh, using uh, card play and negotiating stuff here, to make our way through the location deck. So here we go. First up, we found a grenade. So let me explain how the cards work here. Um, on the left side of the cards, you have uh, basically these icons that represent the currency. So this is what, the, what currency the card will give you. Over here in the lower right uh, is the cost of the card. So to pick up this grenade, I'd have to um, discard two search uh, resources. And uh, on the upper left, uh, I'm sorry, upper right of the card, it tells you what kind of card it is. So in this case, this is an ammo card. And if I were able to take it, if I were able to pay the cost, it would go into my inventory here uh, to the right of my status card. Oh, by the way, um, my handgun that I'm starting with uh, nicely tells you uh, it starts with three clips. So let me get some clip uh, tokens over here. All right. And each of those clips comes with three rounds represented by these dice over here. The values don't matter just yet. 
uh, they'll matter a little bit later on. You also start with that box of chocolates that you are going to give to your wife. And it does have a game effect. It says, discard to re-roll any number of dice you just roll. That is a one-time effect. All right. So uh, we found a grenade, but we can't afford to pay the cost to pick it up. So we'll keep on questing. We have found a distraction card. And that is giving us the resource of one search icon, which is not enough yet to pay for this. Now, uh, however, if we are willing to discard this grenade, it can give us uh, this move icon, this icon of a shoe, and uh, that will allow us to take this card, uh, which is an item as represented by the hand icon in the upper right here, into our inventory. And later on, we'll be able to discard this to reroll a die. Um, so that's pretty cool. A grenade is cooler. So I'm going to hold out for, uh, I'm going to go on questing through the building and see what else we get here. So we found a hostage whose name is Clarence. And to pick up Clarence, uh, to, to rescue Clarence, we have to give up one search icon. And um, Clarence has a benefit here. Flip this card to add a D8 to a test roll. So having Clarence uh, in tow is going to give us a benefit a little later on. So that starts to become a more interesting thing. We can give up this distraction to bring Clarence into our inventory, which I think we'll do. So we'll discard uh, that uh, card from the hunted row, and we're bringing Clarence into our fold. So uh, Clarence, you're with us, and a little later on, you'll be able to help be useful to us. All right, we're going to keep on questing through the hunted deck. We have found Sergeant Pratt. Sergeant Pratt, if we want to bring him, add him to our team here, we have to discard two search icons, which we don't currently have. And he has a benefit, flip this card to discard a terrorist card as it's drawn. So that is a nice thing to have. I'd like to be able to afford Sergeant Pratt and add him to my inventory. But take a look at this. Uh, Sergeant Pratt, find, in the process of finding him, we made a little noise. That's what that um, bell icon means. If we make... If we draw one more uh, bell icon, we'll make enough noise to alert any terrorists who show up. So this is part of the push your luck um, aspect of this game. So we're going to keep on going here. We found a hallway, and a hallway is good. If we're able to uh, discard a move symbol, then we can activate this hallway, which will allow us to expose or, or open up a new location, which is good. Opening up locations gets us closer to the roof of the building where Lars is holding our wife hostage. And that is what we ultimately want to get to. So maybe it's a good thing now to try to go down this hallway by discarding this grenade. Uh, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm discarding the grenade uh, for this uh, move symbol here, this move icon, to pay the cost to activate this hallway which will, so we go down the hallway thematically, and that gets us a new location, which we take from the top of the location deck. All right, what have we got? It is the atrium, and as I recall, this is not a good thing. Uh, the atrium says, draw five cards, and if one of them is a terrorist, it attacks you, and then shuffle the rest back into the deck. Well, no choice, gotta do it. One, that is a terrorist, boom, there you go. <laughs> right off the bat we are going to be in a fight. So here are the rules for dealing with a terrorist. As soon as you tangle with a terrorist, all the other cards that happen to be in the hunted row go away. So we lose an, our opportunity to add Sergeant Pratt to our, uh, to our team here. Uh, and now we are fighting a terrorist that came out of uh, the hunted deck. So um, the terrorist uh, has a strength of three. So we now have to de decide um, how many rounds from our weapon we're going to fire. Uh, we could decide to fire one shot, two shots, or all three shots, and then that would use up one clip. Now here's the thing. We have to roll a three or better on one of those shots to be able to uh, defeat this terrorist, this individual terrorist here. Um, so uh, do we take a chance and roll one? fire one round at him or do we do a double tap i'm thinking we do a double tap so let me move these test dice out of the way here 
and let me roll now. So I'm going to choose to roll two of these uh, three rounds, and I'm going to roll them here in this area, and we're hoping that at least one of these is a three or better. Nope. We've got uh, snake eyes, double one, uh, one on both dice. So we miss. Now here's the effect. Every time you fire a weapon, uh, hit or miss, you burn one time. Every time you do not kill a terrorist with a shot, you lose one health. So our health now goes down to five, indicating that the terrorists got a shot off at us and they wounded us. So now we're in even worse shape because now we only have one more round left in our handgun and we have to roll a three or better to be able to uh, defeat this terrorist. So let's try that, hoping for a three or better. Nope, we get another one. We rolled three ones in a row. So this tangle with this, this combat with this terrorist is not going well at all. So once again, we fired the weapon, lose a time, and now our health goes down to four. And that starts to affect our ability to uh, uh, achieve uh, win skill tests. Instead of rolling three dice, we'll now roll two dice for skill tests. And we're still tangling with this terrorist. And we are now out of ammo. So, um... We don't have an option to run from this terrorist. He's just going to hunt us down. So we have to defeat him. We're going to we're going to give up one clip. We're reloading. Reloading also burns one time. As this reference card will tell you, move the time track cube to the next lowest number whenever you roll dice to fire a weapon or toss a grenade or reload, or you are instructed to do so based on an event or test, or if you hide. It also has a, has a handy reference for all the different icons that you're going to encounter on cards in the game. So, um, we discarded one of the clips for our handgun. Now we have a fresh three rounds. But we've burned another unit of time here. We're down to 17. And we're still tangling with this terrorist. So, um, let's take another two. Let's fire another two shots at the terrorist. We are still hoping for a three or better to be able to dispatch the terrorist. There we go. We finally got a three and a four. So we did enough on that roll to be able to take out this terrorist. Okay, so we fire the gun yet again. That means we lose another time, but we didn't lose another health. So we are stable at four health. Every time we roll a skill test now, we'll roll two dice. Okay. So uh, that was how you resolve combat. Uh, it's pretty brutal. You basically want to, uh, you know, have a, a nice balance of hiding, time management, uh, and really not, not, you don't want to tangle with those terrorists at all. And we, that was what happened in the atrium. We tangled with the terrorist. Okay, we discard that. Now we, do, we draw a deep breath and we keep on going. So let's keep on questing through the building. We found a radio, made a little noise in the, uh, in the process. Can't afford to pick it up, so let's keep on questing. Grenade. And that the uh, radio and grenade are giving us uh, the resources of two move icons right now, which is going to come in handy if we find a corridor, which we don't, not yet. We found another hostage. Oh, uh, yep, and that hostage says, flip this card to pay one less search icon for a weapon card in the row if we're able to take Agent O'Neill. Um, but he costs two search to be able to add to our team, and he's caused some noise. And this radio has caused some noise. So here's the thing. We have two exposed noise icons in the hunted row. If a terrorist card comes out, you're going to see in the lower right, they have these two noise icons, which means that's enough noise to alert that terrorist and they're going to fight you. So we're in a difficult situation right now. Um, we have a couple of options here. We could continue drawing cards, but we're running the risk of combat with a terrorist and we are low on ammo. We've only got two clips left in that gun. Or we could hide which will clear out all of the cards in the hunted row, and then we would keep on questing. I think right now the best chance is to burn one time and hide, which means we will now 
discard all of the cards in the hunted row, and we're going to keep on going. All right, here we go. Keep on questing through the building in search of our wife. We found a flashlight. We've made a little noise. Can't afford to pick it up, so we're going to keep on going. We found a door. That door will require a key. Now, you can get a key as a resource if I, on, a, on a card that might come out, or sometimes a card will grant you a key as a, as a token. And if you had a key as a token, you could discard it to be able to go through the door. And going through the door is nice because it will um, expose or flip open not just one, but two locations. And then you'll have the option of uh, choosing one to uh, play and the other to discard. So that also gets you through the location deck faster. Um, right now, we don't have a key. And we could discard this door to pick up this flashlight. We do have that option. And if we did that, it would have the other advantage of getting rid of this noise. Um, and what is the effect of a flashlight? Discard the flashlight to draw three cards. If you find a hostage, place it in your inventory and then reshuffle the rest. Um, that's kind of appealing, but um, I'm going to keep on questing right now. I'm going to push my luck. All right, we've got a grenade. We've made a little more noise. We cannot afford to pick up the grenade because it requires two search. But now we are kind of in a bind and we have to do something to be able to get rid of the noise, to lessen the noise that we're making. So I think now comes the time to discard this door for its uh, search icon that it's got over here. And then that will allow us to pay the cost of the flashlight, one search icon, and then take it into our inventory. So now, uh, if we wanted to at any time, we could discard the flashlight to draw three cards. And if we found a hostage, place it in your inventory and reshuffle the rest. Um, no time like the present. Let us discard the flashlight and draw three cards and see if one of them is a hostage. One two, three, hoping for a hostage here. Nope, 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 wasn't a hostage. And now we keep on questing. Okay, we've got a standoff. This is a test. This uh, exclamation point means it's a mandatory test. And this says, test five. If you fail, take one damage and discard a hostage. Okay, um, that's uh, mandatory, we have to do it. And when you do a test, you take a look at how much health you have, you pick up that number of dice, and then you'll hope that you roll that number, in this case five or better, to pass the test. So, uh, because we are slightly wounded, where our health is down to four, we're going to pick up just two uh, test dice over here. And we're hoping to get a five or better on at least one of these dice to pass the test. We do it. We've got a five, which means... We passed the test. Uh, there was no benefit for passing the test. We just didn't suffer the bad stuff. So we've passed that test and we keep on questing. Okay, so we keep on questing. Uh, our situation is dire. We are down to one. If that time has to go down by one more, then um, we lose the game. We've got a door. We've got terrorists. I can't hide. So I'm just going to keep on going. Got another door. Nobody's giving us any keys. We don't have enough move symbols to go down that hallway. So we just keep on going. Now this is a test. Okay, this is going to be a critical test because if you succeed, gain two time. All right, so we are going to roll two test dice. Over here, get this D8 out of the way. Looking for a four or better. There we go. We got a six. So passing this negotiation was crucial. We got two time back. That was very clutch. And uh, I've noticed that with this game is that uh, sometimes you get, uh, you get some clutch moves uh, when you're at the brink of defeat and then something happens to pull you back from it. Okay, so now we've done... Enough noise to be able to alert the terrorists. So that 
is probably going to be the end of us, folks. Probably going to be the end. But let's play it out. Let's play it out to the bitter end. So we have to roll a five, a three, and a two to be able to take out the three terrorists on this card. Now, we only have two rounds in our machine gun, so we're going to fire them. And we got a seven and a one, so that misses. Doesn't hit anybody. The seven is enough to kill the most powerful terrorist. And then we put one hit on there, indicating that there's still the three and the two terrorists to tangle with. But we lose one time because uh, we fired our weapon and we lose one health uh, because that th there's still uh, terrorists alive on that card. And now our machine gun is empty. And now our handgun has one uh, shot which is not enough to take out all the terrorists, even assuming that we rolled um, a three or better with this one. It would still take us out and put down our health. So um, this is, well, uh, I don't see any other way here. We're, we're going to have to burn one time to be able to reload the uh, machine gun. And that means that we get a fresh three rounds of D8. There you go, fresh three rounds of D8. And we're gonna roll them all. And we're hoping for a th at least a three on one and a two on the other. And we've got a three on one and a seven on one. So that's enough to be able to take out the terrorists. So that was victory, but uh, we have to lose one time by firing that weapon. We cannot lose one time anymore, which means we lose the game. So that was the end of the game, hunted Kobayashi Tower. Uh, I think actually that I played it mostly correctly uh, for the major pieces. Um, so uh, that is a solitaire game. It's a fun game. It uses dice, as you can see, uh, to be able to resolve uh, combat checks and skill tests. It's a, a, man a time management game. Um, and um, there's also a very interesting mechanic here, as you can see, where, as, as you saw, where um, you don't really have a hand of cards. You do have a row of cards here, and the cards become both your things that you can purchase and uh, represent the uh, currency that you can uh, discard to be able to purchase cards for uh, good things to uh, to be added to you uh, your inventory or to be added to your uh, to your team. Um, so yeah, so. Uh, it's a, I, I like it. It's a, it's a fast playing game. It's a highly thematic game. And um, this is uh, one that I am looking forward to and I'm almost certainly gonna back it. Uh, once again, the game is Hunted Kobayashi Tower designed by Gabe Barrett. It's hitting Kickstarter um, October 15th, 2019. Watch out for that. Until next time, this has been Martin for I'm probably playing this wrong.